So in this video, we're going to look at how we can work with uh, JSON documents using Azure Data Lake Analytics. Um, I, I cover this in quite a amount of detail in three separate parts on the blog. Um, there are a number of uh, four different exercises that the blog posts cover, and we're going to run through all those as part of this video. So in terms of prerequisites to get started, um, you'll need a Azure subscription and a Data Lake store and Data Lake Analytics account set up. You'll also need to upload uh, these uh, custom JSON assemblies. So you can download them from the site. I've got them in the assemblies.zip. Uh, to make things easy for the purposes of the tutorial, I've, I've just uploaded them into the root directory. And that way it makes it really easy to uh, reference them in our uSQL jobs. But uh, you may have like a, obviously a more appropriate place if you're doing this in a production-like environment. So before we jump in the code, in terms of the high level flow, it's uh, it doesn't differ too much from this. So we'll have a JSON document. This is a, a data format typically exchanged by between web apps and APIs. And JSON documents are quite hierarchical in nature. So we're going to try to convert that and pass the JSON document and into a flattened CSV. And we'll be doing that by running a uSQL job uh, where Azure Data Lake Analytics will be our compute engine. Okay. Um, all the files uh, that we'll be using, they're on the site in terms of uh, the different exercises, so you can either craft them yourself because some of them are fairly simple, otherwise you can download them from the site. Uh, for this video, I'll actually be using um, Visual Studio Code and how it integrates with um, Data Lake tools. I won't cover that in terms of how to get that set up. You can uh, refer to Microsoft's own website for that, but um, uh, that's where we'll be working from. Okay, so we'll start off with something really simple and then we'll, they'll get progressively harder as we run through the four exercises. In this first example, we've got a very simple JSON document with a single object. Um, in this case, it reflects a, a movie. So we've got you know, attributes like title, rating, genre, and year. And it's not an array, it's just a single object and it, you, these are kind of key value pairs. So the objective with the uSQL is we want to flatten that out into a single row um, that ref reflects all these data points. So again, the assumption at this point is that you have all those accounts set up and that you've uploaded the assemblies, the JSON assemblies to, in this case, I've uploaded them to the root folder, and hence the uh, relative um, path references. So the first two lines just uh, create the assemblies if they don't exist. The next um, part B is we reference those for our, this particular job. And then we specify this namespace because uh, when we use capabilities from the JSON assemblies like uh, JSON extractor, we don't want to type out uh, kind of the verse name. We just want to refer to them um, using the uh, shortened name. So we're using uh, this namespace and this is where the real kind of chunk of the code is. So um, we declare our inputs and outputs as variables. So we have exercise one, which is sitting on our data lake store. And then we define our output, which is going to be in an output folder on the data lake store. And we're going to call it exercise one.csv. The actual um, extraction is very, very simple. Because uh, we have one object to work with, we don't have arrays, we can simply define this is an example of defining schema on read. So we want to extract title, rating, genre, year. And we also define the data types because it's essentially, as I mentioned, that it's a schema on read. So we've got title, rating, genre as strings and our year as an int. From input file, so the input file is pointing to our JSON document using the JSON extractor. So the results of that will be stored in this variable and then we simply write those results out to CSV. So we'll run this job. This is an example of the integration with VS Code. So uh, for each of the executions, I'll fast forward to the end so we're not waiting for the processing time in the video. But you can see an example of what it looks like as it's running through. Okay, we're back. So you can see that the job has finished. Um, everything was successful. 
we want to look at the um, resources and the inputs and outputs, all that's defined in this summary. So if we, we can download our output. And you can see there that we've flattened our JSON document into the single row. So next up, we've got exercise two. In this case, we have a array of movies, so not a single object. And you'll notice if I toggle between exercise one and exercise two use equal, it's a very subtle change. Um, obviously, we've updated our inputs and outputs to be pointing to the new JSON document and specifying a new output. But um, beyond that, there's only one minor change, which is in the JSON extractor. So whereas previously, if you look at exercise one, there was no parameter value specified in terms of a, a path, a JSON path to start with, we, we have specified one in exercise two, and in this case provided a essentially like a wildcard to say, within movies, we want to iterate through all the objects within the movies array. Otherwise, the schema, in terms of title rating genre year, is exactly the same. So we'll run this and, and check out the output. Okay, our job's finished, so let's check out the results. So you can see there our array has turned out into flattened rows. Okay, so next up, uh, we're ratcheting up the complexity once more and this time we have nested arrays. So while we have the array of movies, within each movie we have another array of genres. Um, so you can see here like the Dark Knight is a related to the crime, drama and action genre. So the output that I'm aiming for is to um, still flatten out all my data, um, but I don't want to have duplicated rows if, for instance, like the Dark Knight it has three genres, we don't want three rows. So I'm going to show how we can um, explode and, and re-aggregate our results. So the top half of our uh, uSQL job is still remains all the same. Um, our initial extraction, our initial schema and read is the same as exercise two. We're pointing to a JSON path which starts at and iterates over each movie within the movies array. But now we have kind of this staging um, step. So while title rating and year we've extracted them directly as they're just kind of immediate key value pairs. When it comes to the genre, uh, we need to extract uh, the values as a tuple. And this will start to become our genre array. So once we have extracted the values within genre, we pull out um, the each object is another key contains key value pairs and specifically we want to pull out genre text because I'm not really interested in the genre ID. Now at this point if we were to stop the Dark Knight would have uh, three rows so each movie would be duplicated by the number of genres and maybe that if that's what you're after then you can essentially stop there and skip straight down to output uh, but in this instance I want to re-aggregate um, essentially kind of reversing the cross apply explode. And we can do that by using the array ag operator and, and grouping by title rating in year. So the array ag will re-aggregate our multiple rows into a single row and each genre will be joined by a string de uh, comma delimiter. So we'll run this. Okay, so the job's finished. We'll check out our results. So 
you can see there that our Dark Knight um, has our string common delimited uh, genre list. And we still have retained a uh, single row per movie. Okay, so now in our last exercise, this is uh, one of the more complex examples. Uh, we have a, a, a typical schema structure that you'd, you'd most likely see out in the wild, um, kind of very hierarchical, very highly nested. Um, and in this case, this uh, sample data has information on, on restaurants across London. So um, the challenge that we've got is a couple of them. Uh, one is uh, not all the data is contained within a single file. So we've been working with single input files to, to, to date. Um, in this case, we're going to have our restaurant data spread across 80 plus uh, JSON documents. The second challenge is that we're going to have key pieces of information spread throughout different levels of um, of the hierarchy. So you can see here we have a restaurants array um, and we have you know, s cuisines, we have um, information that we require at the basic info level. So we're kind of working within multiple levels of a single object. Um, our third challenge is that not all the data is consistent. So there may be some instances where um, things like costs, the average cost per restaurant is, is is not consistent and sometimes that value may be null so how do we handle that um, and then lastly um, similar to the movie scenario where we had multiple genres in the restaurants we have restaurants that are related to multiple cuisines but again we only want to have that one row so we're going to be using similar techniques that we did in exercise three so starting at the top the first thing that you'll notice that is different is we have these curly braces so um, as I mentioned earlier in the video that all the documents that I'm using, I've just uploaded them into root. So if we have a look at um, Data Lake Explorer, you can see I've uploaded the 80 um, documents all in the root. Now, previously we were just working with single JSON documents and so we could be absolute in terms of our reference to um, where those files uh, existed. So the way, the way we're able to specify a set of files is by uh, specifying file set patterns. So we've got the prefix of document underscore and then within the curly brace we can specify patterns and they may be you know a, a date format like yyyymmdd um, in this case, I've just put star and then a suffix of .json. The output will still be a single file. So that's how we solve our multi-file problem. The, the second challenge of having uh, data that we require at, in multiple levels, we're using now a new extractor called the multi-level JSON extractor. So it has uh, three parameter values, essentially. Um, the first one is Where's the base of the path that you want me to start at? In this case, similar to the movie examples, we're specifying down to the array of where the restaurants exist. Okay, so we've got one restaurant, we have two restaurant. The second parameter value is a Boolean, and that Boolean is for um, whether we want it to bypass errors or not, or bypass warnings or not. So in instances where some of these paths don't resolve for a particular object, if this is set to false, as in bypass warning is equal to false, and then it will actually error out. Uh, we don't want that to happen because we'll handle the nulls later on, so we're saying um, for it to bypass uh, those types of issues. And then the last parameter value is a list of JSON paths that marry up with this schema that we've defined. So in terms of handling those inconsistent data points, we have uh, costs, which um, we know is is sometimes going to come up with nulls. So we can use the coalesce operator to basically say, you know, we're null, um, we're just going to have an empty string. Otherwise, cost is if the, there is a value in cost, that's our preference. Um, and then similar to the movie example, we're extracting the values out of the cuisine to essentially grab the cuisine array for each restaurant. 
using the cross apply explode operator. So again, at this point we'll have uh, multiple rows per restaurant if they have uh, more than one cuisine related to that particular restaurant. And we specifically want the cuisine name. And our last uh, step in the process is to re-aggregate uh, those cuisines and, and doing a bit of transformation. So, so some unwanted text uh, within the, the cost string um, and we simply just want the numeric value. So um, there is a Unicode character which represents the pound symbol as well as some, some text there trimming all that up and that leaves us with the value. So let's run this. Okay, so our job's finished running. You can see here is we've got the 80 plus odd JSON documents that ended up being picked up as part of the file set, uh, but the singular CSV output. And there's our 20,000 plus restaurants. That's it. Um, I'll have the links in the YouTube video how to get to the blog post, uh, which steps through this in um, you know step-by-step uh, -step details. Um, otherwise, that's it.